Hello, my name is John Wilding from the University of Liverpool and I'm here with my ophthalmological colleague uh, Philip Burgess to talk about uh, some aspects of retinopathy treatment. Uh, Philip, as a, as, a, as a diabetologist and I see patients that I look after going off and having various treatments for retinopathy, laser treatment, injections and so on. What I'm interested to know is, you know, what's the mechanics of that and what, what actually are you able to offer people who have developed retinopathy that is, that is threatening their vision? Yeah, so we, we think about this really in, in two, two areas. Retinopathy, so um, the mechanism by which uh, the retina is damaged, produces uh, growth factors which lead to the development of new blood vessels, scar tissue, and ultimately tractional retinal detachment uh, and visual loss. And then secondly, maculopathy, damage to the, uh, the, the, the tissue near the central fovea, where, uh, the, which gives us good uh, central vision and good clear color vision. In terms of retinopathy, our mainstay of treatment is laser treatment, and that's ablating the peripheral retina. The, uh, there's a number of mechanisms put forward about how that might work, but we think in broad terms that it redu reduces production of growth factors such as vascular endothelial growth factor from the peripheral retina and stops that drive for development of new blood vessels and scar tissue. More recently, anti-vascular endothelial growth factor monoclonal antibodies delivered in an intervitreal injection have been uh, used for treatment of retinopathy uh, and the recent clarity trial actually showed better visual outcomes in patients who were treated with injectable therapies as compared to laser. However, we have quite a lot of reservations uh, about use of that treatment, how long and how many injections the patient is expected to have. Laser is uh, generally a course of treatment which then works for the rest of the patient's life, whereas injections might be ongoing for many, many years. They come with a in risk of infection in the eye, which can be devastating. Uh, they come at very high cost and a burden of patients and multiple visits. Mm. And um, there's a, a worries about compliance, um, whereas, as I say, laser treatment, you have it and then it continues working. In terms of maculopathy, our options, um, laser has been around for a long time. That still has a role, particularly for what's described in there's various definitions of this as focal maculopathy. Uh, so, uh, and the aim of treatment is to destroy the leaking macro, uh, sorry, microaneurysms uh, and give a grid of laser treatment to, yeah. to, the, to the areas that are, are leaking. More recently, we've had the benefit of, uh, as I say, again, the same drugs, antivascular endothelial growth factor monoclonal antibodies. These are delivered in an intravitreal injection, which is a, a quick if not completely pleasant procedure for yeah. patients. Uh, it can be done under local anaesthetic, it can be done by uh, allied health professionals in, including nurses. Generally this is a course of monthly injections uh, which uh, and the vascular endothelial growth factor in uh, simplistic terms reduces the leakage of blood vessels, it reduces that exudative maculopathy, uh, reduces the fluid and the destruction of the retinal architecture that, that fluid mm -hmm. produces uh, and they, they, those have really become our mainstay of treatment. Mm -hmm. There are then other intravitreal therapies including steroid uh, therapies which have a role as second line agents but have quite considerable drawbacks inclu including uh, formation of cataract and a risk of uh, raised pressure glaucoma. Okay so just coming back to to laser treatment obviously you do do this if we focus just on the proliferative retinopathy where you do this pan retinal photocoagulation that obviously can affect visual fields it's not a perfect treatment is it it does have adverse effects for patients and can sometimes affect driving and things like that. So are there ways that we can minimise that? So uh, so yes, you're right. The, that's one of the, it is a destructive treatment uh, it, and the treatment is applied to the peripheral retina so the risk is loss of vis visual field. In fact, in reality, with a standard uh, treatment, standard course of treatment, which is approximately 3,000 burns on the peripheral retina, very, very few patients will notice a reduction really? in the visual field and uh, in fact in terms of when you talk about uh, driving, a risk of losing your driving licence, it's, it's actually quite rare for patients to lose their driving licence as a result of, the, of that treatment. Uh, the, uh, 
we're talking one or two patients in a hundred who un undergo that that treatment. So that, that's definitely something we think about. It's definitely something we have to consent patients uh, regarding. But um, it, in reality, the numbers of patients who are affected by that are relatively small. Mm. And, and is that also a risk with the VEGF treatment, or is that safer in that regard? So, so yes, yeah, so that's not a side effect of the anti-VEGF treatment. Uh, what, we, what we don't really know, because this is a relatively new therapy, there's lots of things we don't know about it. The, the, we see the, uh, the visible signs of retinopathy melt away with the anti-VEGF treatment, but uh, there is some data su to suggest that the underlying pathology, the, de the uh, um, De capillary death and the ischemia, which is produced by diabetic retinopathy, uh, may continue progressing um, in the background. So, so that's another of our reservations, really, about mm. the treatment. But, but you, you're right; it certainly has potential advantages, including obviously it treats maculopathy as well, and that's maybe a, the mechanism that for the the slightly better visual outcomes that are seen in right. trials and uh, and that it doesn't have some of the drawbacks of uh, mm. the, of laser treatment it, it has its own drawbacks but yeah. uh, it doesn't, it doesn't have yeah so so are there any other advances that are going to be coming along in the future or are we going to be stuck with uh, laser treatment and and uh, vascular endothelial growth factor uh, treatment for, for for the foreseeable future or is there anything new on the horizon well it's certainly in the in the short term we're learning um, more and more about uh, protocols that we can use for um, anti vegf therapies uh, with the aim of reducing the injection burden on patients um, uh, and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll see drugs that uh, have a longer duration of action and therefore uh, reduce the the amount of injections that patients have to have there's also uh, in innovations in terms of laser we're seeing um, uh, navi what's called navigated laser where uh, the, the operator instead of applying the treatment uh, directly themselves is able to program that into a computer to produce uh, a increased accuracy. In the longer term uh, yes we're, we're we're hopeful of new innovations in terms of drugs targeting different, although vascular endothelial growth factor is seen as the primary growth factor involved in retinopathy, there are other pathways that we're, we're keen to target and similar uh, therapies may be able to target them. We're hopeful that in the future we'll be able to uh, deliver a treatment that avoids intravitreal injection, which is not a particularly pleasant procedure. There's been, there were some uh, successes in animal models of topical treatments, so supplying these therapies in eye drop form, but unfortunately they haven't yet been uh, translated into success in humans, and there's a lot of reasons for that. One of these, which is is the size of the eye that uh, animals, uh, uh, mice, rabbit models, uh, have much smaller eyes, and probably the therapies are, are able to get to the back of the mm. eye uh, more easily. Uh, the the other thing we're very hopeful about is uh, providing therapies for ischemic maculopathy. So, um, the all the therapies we have at the moment treat the exudation, so fluid that uh, collects in the retina and over months and years destroys the retinal architecture. And we now have quite effective therapies for that. Uh, what we don't have an effective therapy for is ischemic maculopathy, where we see death of the uh, capillary bed supplying the retina. And at the moment, that is, that is uh, other than controlling the, the uh, factors that drive the systemic disease, we don't have an effective treatment for mm -hmm. that. What we're hopeful in that regard is cell-based therapies. So uh, there's been work on endothelial progenitor cells, circulating cells that may be able to repopulate uh, acellular capillaries, um, and also uh, supply of cell-based therapies into the eye. So that's all uh, work that's in development. None of that is is commercially uh, or available in, in humans at the moment but those those are the hopes yeah. that we'll be able to yeah. actually not just stop progression of treatment but reverse some of the damage that's yeah. been done. Okay that's really helpful so obviously we have a job to do to control glucose and, and blood pressure and lipids to prevent retinopathy but for those people who do develop retinopathy there are some pretty good treatments available oh, and it looks like yeah. there's some quite exciting stuff uh, coming along maybe in the next few years that will really help us reduce the risk of blindness in people with diabetes. Absolutely. So that's great, yeah. thanks yeah. very much for talking to me today. Thanks. Thank you.